In this video, I'm going to go through the major things you need to know about the momentum transfer model. We define momentum as P equals M times V. And then we used this idea of transfer because it's very, very common to use momentum when we're thinking about two objects colliding or exploding off each other, and they transfer their momentum between them. So, the first diagram I'm going to talk about is the SOS diagram, where the first S represents the, or is for the before sketch. So, you would draw a little picture of what's going on in the before scenario. So, I'm showing two carts going towards each other. So, I have cart A. And then cart B. I'm going to give cart B some extra mass. So something like that. And then the idea is you would use this sketch to figure out what is the total momentum of your system before the collision. And then the O is for your interaction diagram. So thinking about that moment where the momentum is transferred, what are the key interactions that are happening? And this is just the same as an interaction diagram we would do for forces. And part of what we're looking for in this is one, to define our system, and two, are there any unbalanced interactions on our system because unbalanced interactions or unbalanced forces can change the momentum of the system. If there are no unbalanced forces, then the momentum is constant. So I've got my interactions. I'm going to go ahead and define my system as cart A and cart B. So if there were any unbalanced forces, I'd have to add to my initial momentum how much force there is times the time that that force is applied over, which we ended up defining as the impulse. But if the forces are all balanced, which in this case they are, then that just equals zero and the system has a constant momentum. And then the second S is for a sketch of after the collision. So if cart A and cart B bounce off each other and head off in opposite directions. There's cart A. There is cart B. And it's extra mass. And so what I'd have to do is figure out what is the total momentum after that interaction. And then that's going to be equal to the initial momentum plus any impulse that was applied. Now, a related diagram that we did just a little bit with, but may be useful to keep in your back pocket, are momentum bar charts. The problems we did with momentum bar charts, instead of doing an interaction diagram, they did a force times time graph. In this case, since there's no unbalanced forces, then it uh, would just be a squiggle along that horizontal line, or that horizontal axis. Otherwise, you would take the area of the force time graph. But in this case, since the force is zero, that area is zero. And then just like we did before and after sketches, I would do before and after bar charts. Except instead of drawing a picture of the scenario, I'm going to sketch some bar charts to represent that momentum. 
And what we typically did is we said the vertical axis represents how much momentum there is. The horizontal axis represents how much mass. So since A is relatively lightweight, has less mass than B, I drew a nice skinny bar. I'm going to give B a relatively fat bar. I also, because they're moving in the opposite directions, and because direction matters a lot for momentum, I gave, one, I gave B a negative momentum in the before. And then in the after, I would do something very, very similar. In this case, A is now moving in the direction I've been treating as negative. So I would give it a negative bar for the momentum. And then I would give B a positive bar, but I would make it wider. So if you're using bar charts, how tall the bar is tells you how fast the object's moving. How wide the bar is tells you how much mass it has. Now with momentum, we also made use of graphs. And we'd often do these based on a single object or based on the center of mass of a system. Now I have the impulse equation up here, where change in momentum is force times time. Because we can reason out some key parts of graphs based on this. So whenever you have two variables that you multiply, if I were to sketch a graph where I've got a constant value for the force, and I've got force on the vertical, time on the horizontal, the area of this graph would be force times time. So what that tells me is then if I go to a situation where the force changes, so maybe the graph looks like this, I can replace force times time with the area of this graph. So, if I were to find the area of this triangle, it would give me the change in momentum. And I can even annotate this very similar to what we do with velocity versus time graphs. And so I can have force, or that change in force tells me how tall this graph is, the amount of time that passes tells me how wide it is, and then I'd use the area of the triangle. Now if I rearrange this equation a little bit, I can get force is momentum over time. So the way that works out, if I were to do a graph of momentum versus time instead of force versus time, the rise on this graph, so how far up that vertical axis I go, would be the momentum. The run on this graph would be the time. So then if I took the slope, I would have change in momentum over time, which is force. So that means the slope of a momentum time graph is the force. Now, this makes a nice parallel to velocity time graphs. So we know momentum is mass times velocity. So if I were to sketch a velocity versus time graph for this same object, it would have the same shape, except it would um, have different numbers because I haven't multiplied by the velocity. Or I'm sorry, I haven't multiplied by the mass. So the momentum time graph has a different scale, but the same shape as the velocity time graph. And then we know that if we do the slope of the velocity time graph, we get acceleration. Well, if we were to do uh, the slope of momentum time, or the slope of the momentum time graph instead, we'd have mass times velocity over time. And it turns out that force is mass times acceleration. So essentially, if we multiply the momentum and, or the velocity and the acceleration by mass, then we get from a velocity time graph to a momentum time graph. And again, this reinforces that idea that if you have balanced forces, you have a constant momentum. So if this net force is zero, your graph has a slope of zero, which means it's a horizontal line, and the momentum is constant.